Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use the Subversion Source Control Server. This is going to be the first in a multi-part series where we'll walk through how to use not only the Subversion Server itself, but the, the Tortoise plugin to allow you to manage your check-in and check-outs in your projects. We'll be using the Visual SVN server package that sits on top of Subversion. Visual SVN is a package that's free and basically allows you to simplify the installation, configuration, and management of the Subversion server on a Windows platform. It's a free product and it is something that I recommend that if you're going to use Subversion and you're new to it, I would try using this first as it's the easiest way to get up and running quickly. Um, for our managing of our check-in and check-outs, we will actually use the Tortoise SVN client. Tortoise SVN integrates nicely with inside of Windows Explorer and allows you to right-click a file and do a get latest, a merge, and edit, and all that good stuff. First thing we're going to want to do is actually create the repository. So I'm going to right-click and do create new repository. And I'm going to call this SVN episode demo. And you'll notice it'll create a single repository with a branches, tags, and trunk folder. Now I like to put each project inside of one source repository. Now by project I mean product. I don't mean a Visual Studio project. I'm talking a product. So if I'm building like my Dimecast website, that would be one repository as it sits right here. Now we've created the SVN repository. We actually want to pull it down to disk. On my file here, file system here, I've already created my test project called SVN Check-in Demo. What I want to do first is I want to actually pull the repository contents down to disk. So the first thing I want to do is do a checkout. Well, this screen will come up and I'll ask you the, the URL of the repository. Now this isn't correct. SVN demo is no longer correct. What I want to do is I actually will go over to my SVN client and do copy URL to clipboard. Now if you don't have this available, you can always ask somebody else in your team or uh, do the browse of the repository. And I'm going to paste in the URL and I'm going to tell it to check out to my uh, folder and I'm going to leave all the defaults the same. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Yes, I do want to create a new folder. This window comes up telling me everything that it's doing. Click OK here. And you notice now I've got a trunk, a tags, and a branches folder. And you also notice that these folders have different icons on them. This little green checkbox means everything's OK within that folder. Doesn't necessarily mean it's up to date but it means there's no changes or modifications on the files on your file system. Now, we, want, we have our existing project, and I want to go ahead and add that to my trunk. So I'm going to just, right now I'm going to drag that into my trunk so it's in the right directory structure. Now I need to add this to my source control. So the simplest way to do this is right click, do, go to Tortoise SVN, and click Add. And when I click Add, a whole bunch of stuff's going to pop up. Now I don't necessarily want to add all this stuff. This is all my research, sharper stuff. So right now I'm actually just going to uncheck this resharper stuff. I'm going to uncheck my bin folder and I'm going to uncheck my OBJ folder. Later episodes I'll show you how to do an ignore on these. Ignore is a pretty powerful feature that we don't have to do this over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it'll tell me it's added all the stuff. Well, technically it hasn't added it. It's just set it up to be added. You'll notice now that the icon is a blue little plus. This tells me that I'm staged to be added, but actually hasn't committed the changes to my source control. I can show you this by going to my server, viewing the trunk, and nothing's in there. In order to go add it, I want to go and commit it. Now, let's take a look real quick. You'll see a new little icon here. It's a red exclamation mark. This exclamation mark tells me that there's some changes that need to be committed. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and do commit. Commit's the same as doing a check-in. And what it does, it'll bring up all the files that are changed or added, and it'll select the ones by default that I've already said I want to add. You know, if I want to add all these other ones, I could simply check this or right-click and do add, but I don't want to at this point. Here I can leave a message, so I'll do initial check-in, click OK. And now it's physically adding and sending the content, and I can click OK. If I come back to my Visual SVN and Refresh. There you go. I have my my project is now within my Subversion control, source control server. And you'll notice that this little green check mark is back telling me that everything's up to date. Now let's pretend I want to make a change. So I want to actually load this project. And I'm going to make a simple change. This project is a very small project. It's got a win form and a single button. Um, it's not terribly complex, but it's, it serves a purpose for this demo. 
We'll wait this for this to load here. What I want to do is I have a message box that when you click a button, it simply pops up a message. And I want to change it to say modified. Now, if I close my project now, you'll notice that I have a little red exclamation mark on my folder as well as my solution file. I want to commit these changes. So I could right click here and commit one change at a time, but I want to commit this as a change set. So I'm going to go back up to my trunk and I'm going to right click my entire directory structure and do a commit. And you'll notice it only checks the files that have been changed. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave a message here. I'm going to go ahead and say message box message changed. Very good habit to get into leaving a message because this is your breadcrumbs for needing to go back and look at it or if someone else needs to see what you actually change and why. I go ahead and click OK. And the commit window comes up and it tells me that sending these two modified files and these two were, were sent and that I completed and I went revision 3. So if I go ahead and refresh the screen now, you'll notice that I have a green checkbox again. That's a great thing. Now here, what do we want to do now? We've actually grabbed down the source. We've actually made a change and committed it. Well, let's pretend that I actually want to do some coding. And then I realize, you know what? I don't really want to make those changes. So I want to actually want to revert. Very easy to, to do here with SVN. So let's open up my project yet again. wait for this bad boy to open and let's say that I I think I need to make, change this message box back and I save that and then I realize you know what I don't like that so I don't necessarily want to retype it maybe I've made a lot more changes so I'll go ahead and close out of this again now the easiest way to do this is I want to go back up a level I'm gonna right click come down to my tortoise SVN and I'm going to come up here to revert. Revert will actually overwrite all your changes from the copy that's in source control. So it says that you made a change to your, S, your solution file as well as this form. Go ahead and click OK. And it's reverted those two files. And you can click OK. And you'll notice now your green goes back and tells you that there's no more changes to be made. So what do, let's review what we've gone over today. This is the first in a multi-part episode series like I mentioned. But we've learned how to create a repository within Visual SVN. We've learned how to pull down the, the repository structure and add a project to our source control. We've also learned how to commit and do updates to the files on our file system based on the content of our source control. So hope you come back. Later on episodes we'll be looking at how to do a little bit more complex like renaming, merging, exporting, uh, dealing with change conflicts, all that good stuff, uh, branching, labeling, tagging, a whole nine yards uh, in future episodes. So hope you learned something today. Until next time.